Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to practice recalling some knowledge about cervical cancer. On every slide, you will be given a question and then you have to respond with the answer. You will be provided 10 to 15 seconds for every question. After 15 seconds, the bell will ring and the answer will be shown to you. It is recommended that you answer the question either verbally or you can keep a piece of paper with you and just jot down the bulleted points of the answer or you can record all your answers on your phone so that you can play back and confirm the correctness of your response. Please give feedback if this method of revision is helpful for you. So let's start. What are the symptoms of cervical cancer? The 15 seconds starts now. If this cancer is very early and uh, the patient has been identified through pap smear or HPV screening, the patient will may be totally asymptomatic. But if the symptoms are present, then these will consist of abnormal vaginal bleeding, which is usually postcoital or intermenstrual. There may be some vaginal discomfort, malodorous discharge from the vagina, as well as dysuria. If the patient has advanced cancer of the cervix and the cancer has invaded the bladder and the rectum, then the patient may have symptoms related to the bowel and related to the rectum. And these symptoms may include constipation, hematuria, fistula formation, ureteral obstruction with or without your hydroureter or hydronephrosis. If the, there is pelvic wall involvement, and the lymph nodes are involved or there is some vascular obstruction, the patient may have a triad of symptoms which may include pain in the leg, edema of the leg and hydronephrosis. Distant metastasis or extra pelvic lymph nodes may involve the liver, the lung and the bone and then symptoms will be related to that. So this is a pretty comprehensive answer to the question. And if you even are able to reply 75% of it, you will be okay. Next, move on to the next question. What are the signs of early cervical cancer? Your 15 seconds starts now. So cervix will look and feel normal in early stage disease, but an, on digital palpation, the cervix will feel hard and rough when this disease becomes more advanced. And on per speculum examination, the cervix cancer will have gross erosion or an ulceration or a mass. The vagina may also sh show induration, ulceration or gross thickening. Next question. What are the signs of late cervical cancer? The 15 seconds starts now. Advanced cervix cancer will have gross erosion, ulceration or mass Vagina may show ulceration, induration, or cross thickening. Bimanual pelvic examination findings often reveal pelvic or paramatrial metastasis. Rectal examination may reveal an external mass or gross blood from tumor erosion. Bimanual pelvic examination findings often reveal pelvic or parametrial metastasis. There may be hepatomegaly if the disease is involving the liver. And pulmonary metastasis is usually difficult to detect on physical examination unless pleural effusion 
or bronchial obstruction becomes apparent. Leg edema suggests lymphatic or vascular obstruction caused by the tumor. Who should be screened for cervical cancer? Your 15 seconds starts now. All women who are sexually active should be screened for cervical cancer. Some women are at higher risk and these include women who start sexual activity at a very young age, if, they, if a woman has multiple sexual partners, if the husband has, is promiscuous and has male partners or female partners, if there is history of sexually transmitted disease, if there is HIV infection, it is associated with a five-fold increase in the risk of cervical cancer, presumably because of an impaired immune response to HPV infection. Or if the patient had exposure to diethyl stilmesterol when she was in utero. What causes cervical cancer? Your 15 seconds starts now. The human papilloma virus is principally transmitted during sexual activity and is responsible for the vast majority of cases of cervical cancer. HPV type 16 has the highest risk of causing cancer of the vulva, vagina or cervix in women. Two years after the infection, cytology will report low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. A small proportion of HPV infections will then progress to cancer and certain factors make the women more prone to cancer. What is the role of HPV in cervical cancer? The 15 seconds starts now. So, HPV has a causal relationship to cervical cancer and there are certain HPV types which are particularly uh, virulent in terms of causing cancer and these are 16 and 18. These viruses can lead to the transformation of normal cervical cells into cancerous cells over time. If there is persistent infection then this again is responsible for an increasing risk of cervical cancer. HPV infection is also linked to the development of precancerous lesions of the cervix known as cervical dysplasia or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. If left untreated, these precancerous changes can progress to invasive cervical cancer. HPV vaccines are available and effective in preventing infection with the most common high-risk HPV types. Vaccination is a key strategy for cervical cancer prevention. What is the role of HIV in cervical cancer? Your 15 seconds starts now. HIV or human immunodeficiency virus does not directly cause cervical cancer, but it plays a significant role in increasing the risk of developing cervical cancer in individuals who are HIV positive. The weakened immune system proves increased susceptibility to the HIV virus. To mitigate the risk of cervical cancer in HIV positive individuals, healthcare providers often recommend regular cervical screening starting at an early age, HPV vaccination if not already received, good control of the HIV virus by giving antiretroviral treatment 
and boosting the immune system. What are the histological types of cervical cancer? Your time starts now. The histological types mainly are the squamous cell carcinoma, which can be keratinizing, non-keratinizing, or varicose, or you may have adenocarcinoma in about 25% of cases, and they are clear cell or endometroid, or you may have a mixture of the two, which is called adenosquamous carcinoma. So squamous cell carcinoma is the commonest type of cervical cancer, it comprises 71 to 75% of all cervical cancers. What is the age-related demographics for cervical cancer? Your answer time starts now. By age-related uh, demographics, we mean who are the women who are mostly at risk and at what age are they mostly at risk? The World Health Organization reports that cervical cancer was seen mostly among women who are aged 35 onwards. And many cervical cancer cases do not have pap smear screening, especially in the developing countries. Cases are often detected and they are detected late and in these cases survival is low. The HPV types causing adenocarcinoma are different from the types causing squamous carcinoma. And HPV-16, which is a stronger carcinogen than all the other HPV types, has been found more frequently in younger women than in older ones. What are the vaccines for cervical cancer? Your answer time starts now. So vaccines are designed to reduce the risk of cervical cancer target specific strains of the HPV virus, which is the primary cause of cervical cancer. There are two main HPV vaccines. One is Gardasil. This provides protection against nine different HPV strains, including the most common high risk types, i.e. HPV 16 and 18. It is approved both for men and for women. The other uh, uh, vaccine is called Cervarix, and this vaccine protects against two high-risk HPV types, especially 16 and 18. So the HPV vaccines are most effective when administered before an individual becomes sexually active because they prevent infection with the targeted HPV types. What is the prevalence of cervical cancer? Your answer time starts now. The frequency varies considerably between developed and developing countries. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological cancer in developing countries. There is no population-based data for cervical cancer in developing countries. Based on hospital admission, this is the commonest gynae cancer. In developed countries, due to cancer screening strategies, the incidence of cervical cancer has gone down. What is the importance of patient education? for cervical cancer. In the absence of national screening programs for early detection, physicians should try to educate patients either individually or through some programs at hospital level. Every center which sees women patients should have the screening test. This is known as opportunistic testing. Some welfare funds should be available to help women who are unable to afford the screening test. 
in a country where there is no national screening program how will you screen women for cervical cancer your answer time starts now The World Health Organization suggests either of the following strategies for cervical cancer prevention. Either you can do a human papilloma virus DNA detection in a screen and treat approach starting at the age of 30 years with regular screening every 5 to 10 years and screening can stop at age 65 or a woman can be screened only once in her lifetime. The World Health Organization recommends the best age is between 35 and 45 years. the proportion of women between the ages of 30 and 39 49 years screened for cervical cancer at least once or more often and for lower or higher age groups according to national program or policy so on a, a general rule in countries like ours the uh, the pap smear screening is performed after marriage and then subsequently every 5 yearly in low risk women up till the age of 65 What is the differential diagnosis of cervical cancer? Your answer time starts now. Other disorders to consider in a woman with possible cervical cancer include cervicitis infection particularly granulomatous primary melanoma vaginal cancer another rare possibility is that a primary cancer is elsewhere in the body and has metastasized to the cervix example endometrial cancer apart from that cervical polyps can also present as with post coital bleeding how will you evaluate a patient diagnosed with cervical cancer Your answer time starts now. Special tests due to underlying morbidity include complete blood count renal function tests such as blood urea serum creatinine urine detailed report and urine culture and sensitivity liver function test random and fasting blood sugar magnetic resonance or imaging of the pelvis and abdomen for possible metastatic disease and if metastatic disease is present then a pet scan is often done and chest x-ray investigations when you do to rule out advanced or metastatic cervical cancer your answer time starts now You will do a cystoscopy and proctoscopy to make sure that the bladder and the bowel are not involved. Chest radiograph to rule out pulmonary metastasis, especially when the disease is more than stage 1b1. A CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis to look for metastasis in the liver, lymph nodes, or other organs, and to help rule out hydronephrosis or hyperuria. An MRI is very important. for uh, finding out the extent of the disease around the cervix and in the pelvis a positive emission tomography or pet scan for looking at no lymph nodes in the pelvis and for identifying those lymph nodes that are involved of imaging in cervical cancer your answer time starts now
So ultrasound using transvaginal uh, approach will give us the size and location of the tumor. A CT scan is used for staging and treatment planning, especially in the abdom abdomen as far as uh, metastasis is concerned. A magnetic resonance imaging is very important for evaluating the size of the tumor, the involvement of the adjacent tumor tissues, and also detecting lymph node metastasis. Positron emission tomography is very useful in advanced stages of, a, of surgical cancer and particularly useful in identifying lymph nodes that are involved. Cystoscopy and proctoscopy, endoscopic procedures to visualize the bladder and rectum to assess if the cervix has cancer has spread to these organs or is invading nearby structures. Fluoroscopy may be used during certain procedures such as hysterosalmogram to evaluate where cervical cancer may have spread to these structures. What are the recommendations of pap smears for cervical cancer after hysterectomy? Your answer time starts now. So total hysterectomy means removal of the uterus and the cervix. But history of negative pap smears prior to the hysterectomy no longer necessary to continue regular pap smears. Supracervical hysterectomy, if a woman has had a supracervical hysterectomy where the cervix is left in place, the protocol for pap smear will continue as usual. In cases where hysterectomy has been formed for cervical cancer or cervical dysplasia, pap smears will be recommended as part of the follow-up care to monitor for recurrence. What is the role of pap smear in screening for cervical cancer? Your answer time starts now. So complete evaluation starts with papinicular or pap smear testing and positive result leads to said colposcopy and biopsies with further workup for CIN or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, including excisional procedures. If pathological examination or evaluation after loop electrosurgical excision or conization suggests invasive cancer with positive margins, the patient is then investigated and managed further. What is the benefit of FIGO staging in the management of cervical cancer. Your answer time starts now. The International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics staging system is a widely used system for staging of cervical cancer. It is beneficial in the management of cervical cancer for several reasons. The staging plays a crucial role in the management of cervical cancer by providing a standardized system for categorizing the disease extent, aiding in treatment decision making, offering prognostic information, supporting research efforts and generation of new knowledge, facilitating communication among healthcare providers, and empowering patients to make uniform choices about their care. With this, we come to the end of our video. If you like the video, please press the like button, subscribe so that we can continue to provide you with these videos, share with friends and colleagues, Give your comments how we can further improve these videos and press the bell icon for notification of future videos. Thank you and goodbye.